All right. Give everybody a few minutes to get in. And I'm going to share my screen. Let's go. Perfect. Perfect. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. So this is Smart Solutions for School Systems, uh, Simplified IT, Predictable Costs, and Fortified Security. And thank you so much for joining today. I am Jamie Paulson, an account manager with K-12 ITC, which is a Menlo company. And I am here with my two co-hosts, Jake Knapper and Andrew Unrhyme. And I'm gonna pass it to them to let them introduce themselves. Andrew, to you first. Sure. Hi, everybody. Andrew Unrhyme, Director of Sales. Um, been with K-12 ITC for a few months now. Did my 10 years as a classroom teacher in the early 2000s. Spent a couple of years as a building administrator as well. So I just decided to join an organization that I think solves a challenge that a lot of you are faced with. Jake? Awesome. Yeah, and I'm Jake Knapper. I am a business development manager here at K-12 ITC. I've been with the company for uh, a little under 10 years. So uh, I've seen the evolution of K-12 through through COVID and um, all the devices being added to the network and um, everyone going online. So it's been, it's been a fun journey and I look forward to chatting with you all today. Great. Well, let's get into it. Yeah, so who we are as an organization, um, there's a lot of different IT support organizations out there. We're, we're fully aware of that. I think what makes K-12 unique is that we solely focus on the K-12 environment. We are focused on the challenges and the issues that your staff and yourselves are faced with. Um, and we look to solution for those challenges on a daily basis. That's where our sole focus lies. We're also one platform and one team. So as you'll hear a little bit later from Jake, uh, we have a, a software platform that props up our managed services component and makes us very scalable and very reliable when it comes to our partners. Um, and we're able to sustain that with an expert team of our own that allows us to prioritize things like cybersecurity, allows us to be consistent from a pricing and budgeting perspective, really just makes us a consistent and predictable um, support system for you, for our partners. And that also makes us a consistent system and support system in the in the marketplace as well, which which is appealing to a lot of different vendors. So we have a lot of strategic partnerships that we have aligned with, both that are in our software platform, um, and some which are are just provide unique one off services for you as a as a school district. Um, you'll see some of them on the screen here, and we're we're appealing to them because of the model that we have. They know that. It's scalable and that it can be used across all different types of educational environments. Um, we're able to provide some of those services. So while we we prioritize and are um, unique in our managed services offering, uh, we also have the ability to meet a lot of different needs that school districts have. And that's honestly why we've curated the list that you see on your screen is we're trying to find folks that support schools the right way, do things the right way for the educational environment. And those are the folks we want to align with. So. And then, so a little bit about us, yes, you know, we, we, we do have some similarities to a lot of other people in the space, but there are some things that really make us truly different. And I, I mentioned the K-12 education focus. I think that's really unique. There are a lot of uh, managed services corporations and companies out there that just really don't cater to any specific one vertical. They tend to flow across all different types of offerings and really just look for the next opportunity, the next business unit. Um, we prefer to work for schools. Uh, we provide, we want to provide support that's focused on, again on the challenges that you have. Uh, we also take on the liability of, of your network. So Jake will talk a little bit about Albert, how that supports things moving forward. But um, one of the things that we provide with our services is a complete and total network refresh of, of all of your hardware and equipment, which allows you to have the most secure environment possible and allows us to scale any security solutions and other things that we need to push out to our customers on, on a broader scale, which means that you can take that lift off of your plate uh, because we, again, take it on for you. And then ultimately it's it's about support being geared toward teachers, right? We want your staff who is overworked, overwhelmed, probably has too many kids in their classroom, is probably working too many hours outside of, outside of the school day. We want to be able to provide them the support that they need to say, hey, when my tech's acting up, which we all know that it will from time to time, 
uh, we want to make sure that that support for them is easy um, and that we're there to help work through whatever concerns or issues that they might have. And that doesn't stop with just teachers. It, it accounts for all staff and even your students as well. And then from a predictability, that monthly cost perspective, we do lease, we do that full network refresh for you. We lease that equipment back to the school district and every five years we do a continual refresh of that equipment, which means that the cost can be very predictable, which in today's day and age, inflation through the roof, um, repair costs, maintenance costs are all things that districts now have to budget for and hope that they're able to stay under budget for. Um, our predictability takes that kind of variable cost off the table and means that you can really start to plan short term and long term for the financial needs for your, your especially your financial network needs um, and IT infrastructure. So. And then like, like Jake will mention, I'm sure when he talks about Albert, we're sta scalable and customizable, right? So we support districts that have as few as 75 students up to districts that have several thousand students. And we customize our solution in order to meet the needs of your individual district, which I think again, is only possible because of this, the way that we go about our business, again, which Jake, Jake will talk about here in just a little bit. I think at that point, I'm going to turn it over to Jake and let him talk to you a little bit about Albert. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. So how do we do it? You talk about um, scalability, predictable costs, cybersecurity, all the different needs that a school district has. And we do that through a model or a platform called Albert. Um, Albert is our flagship product here at K-12 IPC. And really the best way to describe Albert is it, it's simple. So it's simple to uh, to operate. It's customizable to the school. Um, and in addition to that, it's, it's a predictable cost and something that schools can efficiently plan for. Uh, Jamie, if you want to go to that next slide there, we'll talk a little bit about that. So we handle everything. So Andrew mentioned uh, the networking equipment and leasing it back to the school. We take on the liability of that network infrastructure. So no longer are the days that, oh no, a server crashed, what am I gonna do? I don't have that in the budget. That is now K-12 IPC's responsibility. Same with your wireless and your switching and, and essentially everything a school district needs to function in regards to the IT infrastructure. Uh, and again, it's customizable. We understand that some schools have all Apple products, some schools uh, are Chromebook environments, some have online learning and some uh, maybe not so much. And, and we understand that and we really tailor this towards what those school districts needs are so teachers have an easy and uh, accessible way of support. So what is the advantage of, of Albert? Um, Andrew mentioned that we are K through 12 specific and, and that's uh, certainly true here and we are from what we understand, the only managed service provider or MSP to bundle all the equipment and the service to go with it. So when I say the equipment and the service, we have not only the wireless network, but also a team of wireless engineers monitoring that for the school. Um, we do that not only um, during the day, but even during off hours. Uh, Maybe you guys have a basketball game that you need streamed live and all of a sudden the uh, broadcaster gets there and can't connect to the huddle platform. Uh, we have a team of engineers that they can call into and get support for first things uh, like that. Even over holidays, we understand that we've got to monitor that network and make sure things are running smoothly. Um, hosted servers. So K-12 ITC, the ITC actually stands for in the cloud. Our goal is to make sure schools are out of the data center business. So. When we partner with the school, we, we try to get in this uh, access to what their servers are, uh, make sure we understand what, what's running on them, and then we move those servers to our different data centers, which I'll talk a little bit later about in three different locations. And, and what does this do for the school? Well, it means they don't have to worry about the server crashing, as I mentioned, uh, pushing out updates to that server, or, um, or budgeting to, to purchase new servers in the future. We build that out, so it's it's peace of mind for that superintendent and those administrators. Uh, cloud storage, so uh, obviously uh, gone are the days that we're filing things away in a cabinet in the basement of the school. Uh, schools need uh, storage to that to where they can upload things to. We provide a shared drive uh, for all of our schools that we partner with through the Albert package, and um, it's it's really scalable. So uh, we we've, we've never had a school hit that storage limit. We don't anticipate that'll ever happen, but just know we have your back in regards to the storage piece. Um, enhanced cybersecurity. So you know 
cybersecurity insurance companies are just beating down schools' doors right now, and for a good reason. I mean, uh, schools right now are a really uh, big target for malicious people uh, to try to get into their systems and infiltrate their data. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later on as well, but uh, we bundled that in because we know schools need cybersecurity. We also understand that it's not feasible for a school district to go out and hire a cybersecurity expert. Um, and it's, it's a big ask for a tech director to stay up on all the different information uh, that's coming through in regards to cybersecurity and, and best practices. And then lastly, uh, help desk on this slide. Uh, we provide a live help desk from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday for your teachers to call into and get immediate support. That help desk, and actually, Jamie, I think we might have a picture on the next slide. That help desk is uh, here in Kansas City. It's K-12 focused. In fact, a lot of the people on our desk today came from a school environment, so they're really good at putting themselves in teachers' shoes and understanding the issues and nuances that take place in a classroom. Uh, as I mentioned, it is people powered and in person support. So our goal is to answer every single call under 30 seconds and you're getting a live technician. So it's not an answering machine where you're putting in your request and then we're getting back to you. Um, when you pick up the phone, you're, you're getting someone within 30 seconds. We also have outlets of support through chat, which has become pretty popular as well. So if a teacher's in the middle of teaching uh, their students and they don't necessarily have time to hop on a quick phone call, they can chat us and one of our technicians would answer them that way as well. And then the standard web ticket. Um, this sometimes is off out, or out of uh, school hours. Maybe it's over the evening. They realize a teacher realizes they came across an issue. They can put in a ticket and our techs will see it first thing in the morning at 6 a.m. the next day. And then in regards to, um, oh, sorry, Jamie, I wanted to hit on a couple of things on that as well. So okay. in regards to the timing wise, uh, it's our goal to uh, really fix those issues on that first call. So about 80% of our issues that are funneled through the desk, we're able to fix it on that first call resolution. Um, that gives the teachers a ton of time back in their day. They're not trying to track down maybe one or two technicians within your school district to, to get to their classroom. Um, they can get a hold of us. And as you know, with technology, a lot of things can be handled remotely now. And so our, our folks are, are really, really good at doing that. Love it. Thank you. And I think I'm going to push yeah, Andrew to take this one. Yeah, for sure. I, I appreciate Jake calling out the, the idea of trying to handle, you know, tickets up front and, and on that first call. I think one of the one of the ways that we can provide support to districts as we talk about stability and budgeting for stability and things like that is that odds are pretty good that you have a team in place and that team is is skilled and, and strong at the things that they're capable of doing. And what we want to do is provide a, a system that helps them champion those things that they're good at right and be able to take on those initiatives those bigger projects that you have and, and get the most out of their work and so our ability to handle things quickly and, and timely i think leads into our stable environment and the, the support and the, the um, and just really the support that we can provide so from a budgeting perspective you know our our goal is to take variability out of the equation so we're at a, an age where I think we all feel it when we go to the grocery store, everything is about 25% more expensive than it was even two years ago, right? And that that inflation impact doesn't just stop at your home, right? It goes into every aspect. If you're a business owner, if you're a superintendent, you know, anybody is feeling the strain of those increased costs. And so at K-12 ITC, when we include your infrastructure, we include your maintenance, we solve for some of those variable issues, it makes it very predictable and sustainable from a budgeting perspective. Um, the reality too is that while you might have a great staff in place, there are times where staffing is unpredictable for some of our partners. Uh, maybe they're in a rural space and they struggle to find talent, or maybe you've had a fantastic person on your team and that person chooses to retire and finding a person to take that seat is difficult. We're going to be there to support that gap in in staffing, which I think, again, makes us very predictable, right? There's also the HR costs of going out and finding additional people as needed or finding people if you're short. And we want to be the thing that you can lean on in those times to say, hey, I have a consistent solution here. And then ultimately, if you know, if you're just really struggling to fill your staff at all, you, you can know that we have you covered. You don't 
have to go down that road. You know, we're not in the business of trying to replace anyone by any means, but we're also here to support you if that's a struggle, a real world struggle that you're going through as a district leader. We're able to do that. Um, also, a couple other things just from a civility perspective. You know, there, there, Jake alluded it to, and he's going to talk a little bit more about it in the security section of, of the presentation here, but, you know, school systems are vulnerable. Uh, bad actors are out there. People are making plays for your staff. They're trying to fish them and, and gain access to information. Uh, ransomware attacks have become even more consistent across the K-12 space and education in general. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and that is a huge variable. So knowing that you have a, a team like us that's reliable and is prioritizing that security and making sure that we're consistently staying in front of the the network aspect to make you safe, I think provides a level of, of stability financially that that's really hard to prioritize and handle on your own. You can go to the next one. Too. So how do we do that? Um, centralized management really enhances your support. So again, you're not relying on a single individual to be your expert and your unicorn in all things. We have a, a team of people that are experts in their field that really provide that unicorn support as an organization, right? Whether that's help desk related, whether it's our network engineers, whomever it might be, our cybersecurity expert, we have our own director of cybersecurity, that's his sole focus. They're staying up on the latest trends. They're staying up on all the things that are going to help prioritize support for not only you as a single customer, but for all of our customers across the board. Um, and so we're leveraging their skill sets um, and allowing them to take priority for what we do. It also, like again, we talk about multiple times, we're gonna significantly reduce the vulnerability to those attacks because as Jake mentioned, we put everyone into that cloud space. We go to great lengths to make sure that that cloud environment is protected and your network is thereby protected and as a result. Um, you know, we're always monitoring, always discussing those things as a leadership team. How can we continue to do better on that front and make sure that our, our customers' environments are secure? And then ultimately, Part of the Albert platform is we give visibility into our response times. Uh, we take all the maintenance costs away. We do a lot of things that I think, again, provide that stability and that kind of fiscal security that make you realize that the, the financial commitment you're making to us is reciprocated with the, the level of service that you're entitled to. Um, it's something we take really seriously. Go ahead and skip to the next, please. And then I talked about staff a little bit. I think this goes beyond budgeting to a degree, but it's more on the stability side is uh, because we provide that team of support, we're able to tackle multiple issues at once, whether those are multiple tickets for a district on a given day, or whether it's a unique project you're trying to onboard a new software, or you have a, a new building you're trying to outfit with printers or whatever the, the issue might be, those things can be taken care of in conjunction with tickets being resolved, network issues being diagnosed. It's all happening simultaneously. And what that does is really take the pressure off of your staff. Um, we're able to spread that work across our group and make it a less overwhelming environment. And really just allows us to scale solutions. We saw 38,000 tickets um, in 2023, which I just think is a, a massive number. And I'm sure that number will continue to grow as we continue to bring on more partners. But really as a district leader, it takes the pressure off of you when you're worried about potential turnover on your staff, when you're worried about aligning the resources for your IT staff. The people that you have, again, great, skilled, capable of what they do. But if there's if there's ever a gap or you ever lose those talented individuals, we're going to be there to support you in that transition. And you know that we always have your back of support when those moments come up. I'm going to kick it back to Jake. He's a little bit more of a cybersecurity expert than I am. I wouldn't say expert. Maybe it's not the right word, Jake. Sorry, I don't want to. Get you too crazy. Yeah, no, yeah, expert's yeah, but, a strong word there, Andrew, but I appreciate yeah, that. No, no, you're good. <laughs> I think, you know, as I turned over to him to talk more about security, I would just say three final things. We're going to protect you against cost increases. We're going to provide you that visibility, and we're going to allow for long-term planning. And part of that planning is your ability to say, hey, I can sit it and forget it when it comes to my environment and our security is a good reason for that. So, Jake, on to you. Sure, so um, so in regards to some of the products and services uh, that we offer within Albert, and, and we talked a little bit about the vendors that we partner with, here are some of the things that, that go into Albert. So you see the managed IT, um, one thing that we haven't spoke about was hosted phones. So we, we understand there's a bunch of third third party 
um, third party products that are added onto your network, such as the phones or the, the network cameras or uh, door access and things like that. Um, and, and we're certainly aware of that. And so we, we really try to customize that, as I mentioned before, to, to fit your environment. And that might mean adding some of these, and that might mean adding um, none of them or, or, or a, a handful. So we would just need to have that conversation and figure out what the district's needs are. In regards to cybersecurity, so uh, this this slide, I, I it, it probably will scare you a little bit. It's not necessarily meant to do that, but it is a good snapshot of uh, just where education is right now in regards to cybersecurity. So, as you can see, that first bullet point, 87% of educational institutions has have faced a security breach, whether that be uh, uh, a malware attack or a, a phishing attack, sending a fake email and, and one of your staff members clicking on it. Um, it's it's just a really tough time right now for for educators and education leaders to to combat how uh, comprehensive the cybersecurity pieces have become. Um, Three point eight six million dollars is the average cost of a ransomware attack. Uh, I'm not sure if, if you guys were aware of the uh, Vegas breach of Bet MGM uh, a few months back. That cost. That, that cost MGM millions of dollars, uh, maybe even a billion dollars. And to think that uh, someone with the skill set that an MGM has can still get hacked, um, it's, it's really scary because we know in a school setting, there's just no way we can find those engineers to, to do the things that some of those bigger corporations have the, the budget for and, and the skill set for. And then 30% of all staff uh, failed phishing tests. So, um, some of you might have uh, different programs like a no before or um, some fake uh, phishing tests to push out to your staff. Uh, it's a good it's a good little test to figure out where you guys are, stand in regards to cybersecurity and, and um, how vulnerable your teachers are, uh, maybe how trustworthy your teachers are. Um, but we can certainly talk a little bit more about how to avoid clicking on the wrong links and educating your staff to make sure they understand the, the nuances of cybersecurity. So, so how do we combat cybersecurity? How do we how do we go about a layered approach uh, regarding cybersecurity? So, first things first, I, I mentioned hosted servers in one of the, the previous slides we spoke about. So, uh, we have three different data centers. So, uh, those are located in Dallas, Denver, and in Kansas City. And what we do through Albert is we take hourly screenshots of the district's data and we back that up randomly to one of these three data centers. Uh, once we do that say uh, uh, it used to be more of a uh, maybe a natural disaster you, you've heard of that disaster recovery uh, maybe a tornado a fire uh, some sort of water damage to your your data center and you lose that data uh, well now it's more uh, regarding cybersecurity and, and um, having backups so in case something does happen on site that you can restore that data and the school can it can be back up and running so i mentioned the hourly screenshots at the local level we also take 24 hour screenshots at the more macro level so what i mean by that is once we transfer that data every every hour from your district to one of these data centers every evening every every day we randomize another uh another uh, data transfer from wherever that data lies right now to either the, one of the other two. So just know that from data best practices, we have you not only covered at the, the micro level, which is at your school, but also at the macro level to where if anything were to happen to our data centers, you guys would be covered. Um, strategic bundling uh, in regards to uh, security products is important as well. Uh, we have um, EDR, so endpoint detection response that we bundle with Albert. Uh, we also have a director of cybersecurity that Andrew alluded to earlier that's constantly monitoring our schools, um, web filters, firewalls, everything that a school needs cybersecurity wise, we try to bundle that into Albert and then put the people behind it to manage it because we, all, we know a product is a product, but you also have to have the skill set to make sure that product's working correctly um, in your environment. Uh, I mentioned the director on our cybersecurity team. We added that person about two and a half years ago because of, um, which goes on to the next bullet point, cybersecurity insurance. 
you guys are getting hounded right now to make all these changes to be covered by your insurance provider, but the state isn't throwing money at you to do those things. And so, again, we know that you need these things, but we also know it's not feasible for a school to go out and procure all these things in-house. So we bundle it in and, and through uh, being able to buy all of these products for all of our schools, we're able to give a price break, which we then handed on to the school. And then support for, for digital citizenship. Look, if a student wants to get to a bad site, they're gonna get to a bad site. Uh, we do everything we can to prevent it. I'm sure you guys are doing everything you can to prevent it on your end today. But the truth of the matter is it, it's really hard. Um, but coaching up our schools on how to go about digital citizenship, not only with, with students, but also maybe parents of that student, uh, we, we certainly play a role in that and making sure that uh, uh, schools know how to, how to go about handling that. All right, best part, Q&A section. Uh, so we do have a couple of questions, not too many. The first was, um, what does installation look like and what's the timing for that or best timing? Jake, you wanna take that one? Yeah, sure, so uh, great, great question. So uh, traditionally in a school setting, schools wait I mean, it's it's very predictable. They wait throughout the whole school year and then they pull the trigger and then they every school wants something done in the summertime because guess what? That's when students are no longer and teachers for that matter are not in the building. Uh, with Albert, we really try to simplify that process. We have we have installations and implementations going on uh, throughout the year, whether that be overnight or on the weekends. Uh, we send a team of uh, engineers out to make sure it's running smoothly. Uh, we understand that when schools need support, they need support now and not five months from now in the summertime. So we do our best to accommodate that school's needs, uh, but then at the same time, not disrupt instruction because we know how important that is as well. So uh, right now, actually right now, we're, we're in the middle of an install for a school, I believe in, in Arkansas. So uh, we can work around those schedules and uh, work with uh, district leadership to, to just make sure that uh, instruction is not disrupted. Very nice. Uh, and the other question was concerning E-rate, like how we fit into that ecosystem or how schools can work with us to utilize E-rate funding. Yeah, another another great question. So I'm sure as, as you're watching this webinar, you're thinking, okay, well, we, we buy our switches through E-rate or our access points or firewalls or some of our cabling needs. Um, and that holds true with Albert. So uh, our services are E-rate eligible, but it's a little bit different than probably what you're used to. What USAC and the federal government has done is said, if, if you have a third party company managing your network, you can actually seek funds out for, for that uh, contract. So Albert and K-12 IPC falls under category two managed internal broadband services. So. Uh, we like to think you're almost double dipping in regards to uh, getting funding through USAC because you're getting funding on the equipment portion as well as our team managing that system for you guys. And so while you can't E-rate your network person's salary, for whatever reason USAC has said, you are allowed to uh, to uh, put those funds towards uh, companies such as K12IPC to manage the network for you. And we help through that process. We we, I get questions all the time on, can you write the write the uh, 470 or the E-rate form for me? We cannot do that because we are actually an E-rate provider, uh, but we can certainly help navigate those waters and, and what is E-rate eligible uh, in our services. Awesome. That's all the questions that I see, but as I am going to mention in the next steps here, if you do have any additional questions, you can feel free to email us, get in touch with us. Um, there isn't a question that I have seen come across yet that we haven't been able to answer. So please send all of your questions to us and check your email within the next 24 hours for the recording of this webinar. We'll have the recording and the deck so that you can follow along, share with your staff, share with your decision maker, whoever else you need to discuss, and then set up a consultation with your account manager. So there's a nice little team of us spread across the United States now, and we can meet in person, we can meet virtually, but we'd love to just chat with you about what your current tech structure looks like and what your priorities are for the future. 
and then see if there's any opportunities for partnerships moving forward. And then if you would like to connect with a reference, another school, another school district, someone else who has worked with us, please just let us know. We have a great list of references. We've got some good testimonials that we can send your way, but sometimes it's just nice to hear from another person or another school district that's done the exact same thing that you have, or maybe something similar and see like, hey, how did it go for them? Are you finding out that your, you know, your, your load has lightened up a little bit? What's going on with all of your technology now? How has it been to work with them? So we're happy to do that as well. Jake, Andrew, anything else to add there? No, I think you covered it. All right. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining and we hope to speak with you soon. Thanks. Thank you everybody.